Here we see two of the greatest recording artists of the 20th century. Now, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but the establishment seems to be unraveling faster than Jethro Bodine moonlighting as a narc. <laughs> this is the 60s, man. Everybody's doing drugs. Even the nuns on TV are flying, man. <laughs> Dig, like our generation didn't experience the kind of life-altering, character-building events that our parents did in their formative years. Like the Great Depression and World War II, we came of age amidst unparalleled prosperity. So much so that when the marching orders came down from the man to pry ourselves away from our safe, comfortable world and travel to the jungles of Southeast Asia to put our lives on the line in a war whose ideology is questionable at best, well, we rose as one and employed the sophisticated thought process and articulate vernacular for which the counterculture was known to say, hey, fuck that shit. <laughs> That's what's really going on here, baby. Yeah. We stopped listening to the elders in the American tribe because look what they're pushing on us, man. Racism, careerism, materialism, especially Vietnam, which is a limited war in the same way the Archies are a band, okay? <laughs> Our leaders have more bullshit excuses than Sly and the Family Stone's road manager. <laughs> I went to Frisco myself recently and joined a commune in Haight-Asbury. You know, I learned a lot in the two hours that I lived there. Mainly, <laughs> mainly I learned that people who are fun to get high with make shitty roommates, all right? <laughs> you know, I didn't mind. Oh, thank God. I didn't mind the smell of patchouli or pot or incense, but there were guys that had been wearing the same poncho for four years. <laughs> I find it ironic that the very same people who know how to make soap never seem to use it. <laughs> Admittedly, a lot of this generation's amplified sound and psychedelic fury is about nothing. Not every long hair hippie is a politically active person or even aware. I've gone out with more than a few flower girls who think LBJ is Spanish for blowjob. <laughs> I really think that what's bumming out the average square and is the whole free love thing. I mean, think about it. When Dad was 19, he'd take Marianne to the soda shop and spend the next two hours watching her ruby red lips sucking a vanilla milkshake out of a long, straight straw. Finally, he drops her off with a peck on the cheek and races home to finish off the evening with the women's underwear section of the Sears catalog. <laughs> now, this same guy is watching these hot-looking hippie chicks come up to these dirty, long-haired freaks and saying stuff like, cool sandals, wanna fuck? <laughs> No wonder they hate us, man. And they don't like our music, either. Hippies have a fresh, open approach to music, a spontaneity and childlike innocence towards self-expression, which manifests itself in the extended improvisational jams of the Grateful Dead. Unfortunately, this anything-goes attitude also means that people can walk around playing tambourines in public and not get punched in the face, all right? <laughs> Who says utopia doesn't have its dark side? Hey, the revolution is here, my friends. The prisoners have smuggled in a sharpened spoon, and we're chipping away at all the old tyrannies, the tyranny of family, the tyranny of capitalism, and we will continue to fight them boldly, bravely, without fear or shame, until we have shaped a purer, sweeter world, or, you know, until our parents stop sending us money, whichever comes right. <laughs> of course, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. <laughs>